Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today's car, a 1964 Pontiac GTO, four-speed, uh, Yorktown blue is the color. And for those of us that grew up in this era, this is the car that really started the muscle car craze. I mean, there were big, fast, powerful cars, certainly before this, but they were always in the full-size car, the, you know, the New Yorker, the Chrysler 300, the Galaxy, the Impala. Uh, this is the one that sort of violated the ban that General Motors had about putting big engines in smaller cars. How they got around it is quite clever. But this is really the car that started it all, 1964 Pontiac GTO. This car is owned by uh, Tim Miller, who owns Surf City Garage. Tim, come on in. Thanks for bringing this. Hi, Jay. I'm glad always, to be here. I've always had a thing for these cars. These are just, uh, this is really, for those of us a certain age, this is the car that started it all, isn't it? Well, it really is. I think that was a pretty good description. Uh, this car really opened some doors in not only General Motors, but the other manufacturers, too. Now, what was the rule? The rule was, at the time, you couldn't put the big motor into the smaller car. But what was the reason for that? Well, you know, uh, Pontiac, uh, in particular, uh, earned its living on the racetrack in right. the late 50s and early 60s. But um, they, all of a sudden, you know, Ed Cole was in charge at GM, and uh, they closed the door on all of that. Yeah. So uh, they had to figure another way to sell these cars. So yeah. they simply did it on the street instead of the racetrack. Because Pontiac used to be sort of the old man's car in right. the early 50s. And then they came out with a wide track, certainly, and in 59 and then uh, John DeLorean was he made head of Pontiac is that what it was uh, he was a engineer at the time that he uh, that he launched the GTO okay. this car gave him his first promotion to head engineer oh okay and how did he convince them to put the big 389 into the Tempest he actually didn't what he did is a covert operation uh, there's some debate on whether he instructed his own engineers to put in a 389 into the Tempest platform, which could only get a 326 right. at the time, or if they did it and then said, check this out. Right. Um, but no matter how it happened, uh, once he saw it, he had to get it approved by a top brass. A new model would require GM top uh, chiefs of each division signing off of it. He, right. he knew it wouldn't he wouldn't get that. Right. So what he did is he made it an option package. Right. So for $290, you could check the, the little box and you got a GTO added onto your Tempest Le Mans. Right. So you ordered a Tempest Le Mans and for the extra money, they'd stick on the thing and put the 389 with the yes, four speed and the three two barrels. That's right. That's and right. it, I think even General Motors was surprised about what a hit it was, wasn't it? Well, an interesting uh, side to that is um, Pete Estes was uh, John DeLorean's boss, and he's the one that ultimately would take the heat for it. Right. Um, they told him not to make more than 5,000 units because they didn't want to get stuck with them. Right. They sold 35,000 the first, the first year. Wow. They doubled that in 65. Because yeah. don't forget, 64, the Mustang had just come out. That's right. Uh, there was no Camaro yet. That was years away. Right. So this was, this was really GM's only answer to sort of the youth revolution or whatever they wanted That's to call right. it at the time. And plus, you could still, today it looks like a huge car, but back, back when we were kids, this was like a mid-sized car, yeah. It really is, and, and as you, uh, you mentioned earlier, they weren't the first, John DeLorean wasn't the first to put a big engine in a small car. Mm -hmm. Actually, you could look back to 1961 when the Dodge Dart received a 413 from a big Chrysler, Liber right. uh, Chrysler Imperial. Uh, that really preceded this by two or three years. Yeah. What the difference was, though, that made this successful is Dodge back then, Chrysler was a small competitor to a giant right. GM. So GM uh, pulled out all the stops and uh, they were able to kind of consumerize this car, if you will. Um, the super stock Dodge, the typical guy would be at the drag strip, uh, cigarettes rolled up in his t-shirt right, and right. he's driving a super stock Dodge. You could find a woman driving a GTO just as well as a man. Right. That was the key. Right, right, yeah. And uh, really a good looking car, because it's really just a Tempest with the stylized hubcaps and the non-functioning hood scoops and all the other stuff. And this is a really rare car because this has, this is a convertible with a stick with power steering and air conditioning. That's right. Yeah. 
You know, according to the experts, there's less than 10 of these left on the planet with air conditioning and these, uh, these combinations, so it is a pretty rare car. Yeah, okay. And this has the 389 four barrel, right? Because you right. couldn't get the, the tri power with air conditioning? Right. I've owned this car for 22 years. I bought it from the original owner in Dallas. And uh, he told me his story, which is a pretty common tale. When you click the box for air conditioning, you couldn't get tri power. Right. You got a four barrel, 325 horse, 389. Right. But the dealer sold you the tri power out of the parts department and they delivered it in the trunk. Oh, okay. And this one is actually it's in the trunk. It's got it in the trunk. That's All right. Well, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Can we open the hood? Now, you've restored the car, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. 64 had an alternator, yes? Yeah. Yes, it did have an alternator. Okay. And then factory air, although a 50 year old factory air is not like your air conditioning in your new no, car. No, it's amazing because when you get, we use vintage air in most of the cars here and the unit's like this big. And look right. at the size of this thing. It looks right. like it would uh, be a deep freezer unit for a, refrigerator, for a restaurant or something. It's funny you say that because it's made by Frigidaire. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> it was a refrigeration unit. Wow, very, very nice. But still looks best with the tripod with the three little... Yeah. Well, it really does. Uh, you know, they, they added, uh, all of this is factory, uh, the chrome, big chrome uh, valve covers right. and the, the breather. Um, they dressed it up a little bit, but it was essentially, a, it did have a high lift cam, yeah. but uh, it came right out of a station wagon or a Catalina. That's one thing you don't see anymore. You know, back in the day, the factories used to sell engine dress-up kits. You right. Ford, you get the Cobra valve covers that were finned right. and, you know, all that. So when you open the sure. hood, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Now you open the hood, you go, oh, ah, oh, oh. It doesn't look like anything. Whereas this is uh, rather impressive. Very nice. Let's see, because 64 had the dual uh, braking right. system. Right. Um, four speed transmission. Is that the same transmission that's in the uh, Chevy Corvette, the Muncie four speed? Is it different? Yeah, uh, no, it's exactly the same. Uh, yeah. M20 and M21, close okay. ratio, wide ratio. They call it a rock crusher if it's in a, right, in a right. Corvette. Uh, the interesting thing about the Pontiac, though, is it didn't come stock with that. Even when you ordered a GTO, you, you got a three-speed. You had to upgrade to a four-speed. Oh, yeah, that's right. But not Pontiac nor Chevrolet had a three-speed. So every GTO that you see on the street that has a factory three-speed came from Dearborn, and it's a Ford. Oh, is that right? That's right. Wow, that's an interesting piece of history. Okay, let's shut this again. Now, one of the great... This is probably one of the best marketed cars of all time. Because those of us of a certain age remember there was Car and Driver magazine, what was it, maybe April 64, in and right. around the spring. Right. They raced a Pontiac GTO against a Ferrari GTO, which is, was as ridiculous then as it sounds now. And surprisingly, the Pontiac GTO won. Right. But the Pontiac GTO they raced was it had, what, a 421? Well, you know, they kept it a secret. All of these, these guys kept it a secret for more than 40 years. Right. Everybody thought that that Ferrari had lost, yeah. except for a handful of folks that uh, knew that they had replaced the engine with a 421 Super Duty, which was putting out about 110 horsepower more than the stock. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it was one of the, it, it's really the magazine, I don't know, I don't know if it's the issue that made Car and Driver, but certainly must have done tremendous for their circulation because everybody bought that issue. The idea just seemed crazy. What a Ferrari GTO, a Pontiac, what, what? Because don't forget, it was the first year of the car. Nobody ever heard of it. And it beat, well, the Ferrari GTO is a $34 million car minimum now. Right. So that's, that, that's pretty amazing. Let's take a look. Uh, the wheel covers I love. You know, I love this better than even putting mags on it. I just like the stock look of that, that, yeah. that fake knockoff. Pontiac. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a another option. This car has 31 options on it, but that's one of them. Yeah, and they have little slots in there, They're kind of like the the fake hood scoops. Right. Uh, they do a little bit of uh, cooling for the brakes, but that's the design package. Yeah. But no disc brake on this. No, no disc brakes. No. 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 Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, and of course, this was considered very cool back in the day. Those are called splitters, and that's uh, each side had uh, two of them. Right. Right. The side exhaust. Let's uh, let's open the trunk up and, and take a look at what's in there. Right. He's got some got cool the key, memorabilia. Key right here. Oh, you got it right here. Okay. Oh, 
Ah, oh, it's funny. Okay, so you got all the all the GTO stuff. There's the tri power setup. And how much is that new? And it was probably like $180 or something. Yeah, it was like 140 bucks brand yeah. new from the parts department. Yeah, and if you wanted to buy one of those setups now, what would it cost? Well, uh, <laughs> between four and 5,000 restored. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now, I remember these, it was SO gasoline. If you filled up and you had a GTO or something, you could put this tiger in your, <laughs> the tiger in your tank thing, yeah, which is that. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Right, even the Pontiac dealers, uh, they had the longer ones that would hang out of the, from under the hood. Oh, that's this one here? Yeah. Oh, so if you went into a dealership okay. and you saw a GTO, it'd have one of these hanging out of a closed hood. And it's so authentic looking, really. It really just looks like a tiger's tail, doesn't it? I mean, it just looks like some rather bizarre. Well, never mind. I'm not even going to go there. But, um, and of course, the brochure. Now, I remember... Although we're off subject, remember the Sprint had the overhead cam right. six. You can't find one of those. No, they're very rare. And very they're pretty rare. cool, aren't they? They really are. I mean, it's a Cosworth design. It's a yeah. it's a great engine. What it was was, I think that was DeLorean's idea again. Right. They made a six-cylinder overhead cam. It was basically a GTO with a six and a four-speed. It was in the Tempest, I guess. Right. It? Yeah. Right. I always wanted one of those, but I've never been able to find one. But they're really pretty cool. And of course, the, the Grand Prix was at the top of the line, but the f fastest was still the GTO. It was, only because of uh, weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's so funny. This looks like something from 100 years ago. I mean, just the way it's all black and white. I remember right. these when they came out. The pictures are all black and white. Oh, some, okay, guys. Wow, people with long hair, wow. It's Jim Wangers, he was uh, He was uh, advertising there. exec in charge yeah. of the GTO There's program. There's the six-cylinder engine with John DeLorean. Uh, for those too young to remember, there was even a song, Little GTO by That's Ronnie right. and the Daytonas, That's I right. think it was. But that was part of the marketing, too. Yeah. It was put out to be just a, you know, a pop recording, but it was done by the Pontiac Advertising Division. That's right. So uh, it became like a number one song which was pretty smart. And the only one they ever made. Uh, yeah, it's the only song they ever made, yeah, but it's yeah, very cool. Look at these rather. Oh, Tulane Blacktop. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, yeah. I remember Warren that. Oates. And, Warren yeah. Oates and those guys. I, I saw that movie not that long ago. James Taylor was in it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. That's funny. But this is, this, and this has got to be a rare book too, isn't it? It is, that's the first edition. Yeah. That's very cool. Very cool. Now explain what uh, that little pad is. So, before there were bucket seats, everybody rode in cars with bench seats. Right. And so your girl slid all the way over. It was common practice, nearly sitting in your lap as you drove. Okay. Then bucket seats came out and consoles like a GTO. Yeah. So Ace Wilson, who owned uh, Royal uh, Pontiac in Royal Oak, Michigan, came out with the idea that he made a sweetheart seat. And so that's a little oh, cushion. Was supposed to sit on that? Yeah, it goes in between okay. yeah. the, the bucket seats and, and the console. If I'm your girl whose butt fits on that seat, you know. Well, you could buy two of them. <laughs> you could buy two of them. Might need half, might need half a dozen. Uh, but, all right. And what do we have here? This is GTO. Well, that's the, what, the club magazine? Right. And uh, this is an original brochure of the, uh, uh, the 64 GTO. The interesting thing about that is, remember, this was a covert operation. Right. No one was supposed to know about it at GM. So all of the other cars got these big, beautiful fold-outs that were yeah. six feet wide when you folded them out, and DeLorean got this. Well, look, at notice it's not even positive traction. It's burning right. rubber on one wheel. Well, if you read the copy on that, it's pretty interesting. Uh, this is written, uh, you wouldn't write this today. Oh, with 325 plus horsepower on tap, traction can be a sometime thing. We strongly recommend uh, safety track and optional limited slip differential. Oh, see? So and they even had edgy marketing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, my cousin Vinny, I think that movie, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> remember, remember it had the, didn't have a positive traction. That's right. Yeah, very cool. 63 Tempest. Wow. Well, it's fun to have all this bits of memorabilia. Let's, uh, and, and of course, right under here, is that standard GM, your gas tank is right there. Right. What is it, about a 20 gallon 21. tank? 21. 21 gallon tank, okay. And you got all the original stickers. Oh, this one has a limited slip? Yes, it does. Boy, this was really optioned out, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, 31 yeah. options. Wow, okay, very nice, very nice. 
And let's, uh, let's take a look. Well, you know something? We'll go over the dashboard and all that while we're driving it. Uh, I think it's about time to take for a spin. Can we do that? Let's go. Okay, in 1964, it didn't get much cooler than this, you know? I mean, there really weren't a lot of cool cars around in 64. They were starting to come. The Mustang, the Barracuda, the GTO, that was about it. And then everything else was from Europe. You know, everything else was pretty much Falcons and Novas and all that stuff. horsepower rating with the tri-power? Uh, 348. Okay. So 325 with a four barrel, yeah. 348 with the tri-power. This is California cruising. You know, the 64 Pontiac GTO, I think it really did more than just the muscle car, our first muscle car that uh -huh. all of the manufacturers back then had the same corporate edict about big engines and small cars. Right, right. So, you know, I think John DeLorean accidentally opened a lot of doors. I mean, you can make an argument that even Carroll Shelby at that time might not have made the deal with Ford to take their little Mustang and make it into a GT350. Right. So I think it's, that's the most significant thing about this particular year model of car. Yeah. It's a perfect California day, perfect California oh, car. Beautiful. Why, this is the classic California kind of cruise muscle car from the 60s. It's really fun to drive. This car's only got 150 miles on it, so that's why we're not doing burnouts and things. Plus, the owner's right here. I, I can't really do the burnout here. He's keeping his eye on me. Um, we've got a little driveline vibration coming through. I think that's why. I think because we've got two guys in the car. You think that's it? I think that's probably it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's probably what it is. Maybe a set of air shocks bring it up a bit. Right. So I just want to make sure we don't damage it. But let's, uh, let's put our camera in the back and look over our shoulder, and we'll show you what it's like kind of from the driver's point of view. As I mentioned earlier, this car is pretty rare because, A, first-year GTO, and it's also a stick with air conditioning, power steering, and a few other options as well. Uh, here's a dash in front of you if you got a battery or oil pressure. I always loved GM back in the 60s. If you didn't order the clock, they made sure people knew you didn't order the clock by putting the face in there but without the hands. Speedometer, uh, and of course gasoline, temperature, uh, tachometer built in. No cars had tachometers back in the 60s except for maybe Shelby's and Cobra's and European cars. So that was pretty exotic. AM radio, air conditioning vents, wood uh, simulated wood trim steering wheel. That's pretty cool. This particular model's even got the uh, vibrating seats. Yeah, he's got the vibrating seats, that's right. But boy, it drives beautifully, it rides nice. For 1964, this was a really a sporty car. Yeah, I think that they, they got it right the first time. Yeah. What a thrill this was to drive this car. This is one of those bucket list cars that I've had for a long time. If you wonder why Tim cars, Tim's car looks so good, it's because he used your own products. I mean, what, Surf City Detailing? Surf City Garage, yeah. Surf City Garage products, his own waxes and everything, so that's why they look as good as they do. But like any car you restore, there's always going to be problems. This one only has 150 miles on it, and we found one today. If driving by yourself, as he does most of the time, it's not a problem. Two guys in it. The springs are sagging and the drive shaft is hitting the body, I think, a little bit. When we put our large buttock cameraman in the back, uh, it really was scraping on the ground. So, so that's other than fixing that, I think you're all set. Tim, thanks a lot. Hey, thank what a you, thrill. Jim. So I'm, uh, 
I got to find one of these early GTOs. Eh, pretty cool. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>